Zechariah chapter 11. The Bible says at the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 that in the last days there will be doctrines of devils. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 that we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important to know that in the last days we are not to be ignorant of what Satan's doing to affect our world and we should try to not be ignorant of his devices, be aware of them and not fall into his snares, into his traps. Now one of the things Satan is going to do is that he's going to make the whole world receive the mark of the beast. So in the mark of the beast, this is very interesting. Your book is very amazing. It has, it writes these words for a reason. But if your hands are Zechariah 11, go to Revelation 13. Revelation 13. I believe in every word in the King James Bible, man. I mean, every word. If God says, if God says your left foot, I believe it's the left foot, not the right foot. If God says the right foot, I believe it's the right foot, not the left foot. So let's look at Revelation chapter 13. This is where I'm getting at, folks. We're going to look at verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark. In where? Their right hand, or where? In their forehead. So the mark of the beast is going to go in the right hand or in the forehead. Now the mark of the beast, it's intended to be a buy and sell system where if you read the next verses, verse 17 and verse 18, the infamous 666 or 666, where it goes in the right hand and in the forehead. Now, there are people who say, well, what am I going to do? Pastor, have I received the mark of the beast? I was actually surprised how many emails, calls, and comments I'm getting of people who are afraid they received the mark of the beast. Well, first of all, you can't just depend something you watch online where, oh, you got the mark of the beast, and then you start questioning your salvation, and people get in a panic mode. No, what I'm going to do is clean up that mess online now. You, it is impossible, it is impossible for you right now to receive this. Why, Pastor? Because if you look at the very next verse, if you look at verse 16, he causeth what? All, both small and great. He causeth them all to do it. If you'll notice in verse 15, he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause, that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. It's because the answer is very simple. We don't have a one world ruler yet where he's forcing everyone to worship him. Now, did that happen yet? No, we don't have a one We consist of many different governments still. We don't have a conglomerate one world ruler yet. And when this one world ruler comes, he has to, he has to make you worship him. Did we see that system yet? No. By the way, what's the title of your book? It's Revelation. What did Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 says? The revelation of Jesus Christ, which what? God must show things to come. It's future. So look, don't worry about getting the mark of the beast, etc. This did not happen yet. This is a future time period. That's why dispensationalism is so important. Right now, we're here at the church age. Let me ask you this, in all of Paul's epistles in writing the church of so-and-so, the church of so-and-so, the church of so-and-so, in Galatians, Corinthians, Thessalonians, did he ever mention one time about the mark of the beast? Why? Because it's not there in the church age. But Revelation talked about it, right? Why? Because it's a future time period. And then you have the millennial kingdom after that. So you got to understand that this does not occur until right here. Right now, you're not here. Let me write something you're familiar with in a shopping mall. Did you Now, please, online people, do not post comments or emails, do I have received the mark of the beast? Please don't do that. I show you something very clear. No, you didn't. No, you can't get it. You're right here. All right, this did not happen yet. We don't have a one world, world ruler yet where he forced everybody to worship him. Now, here's the thing, is that what's very interesting about this passage, about the right hand and forehead, is go to the book of Mark. 
your hand is at Zechariah 11 still, but go now to the book of Matthew, excuse me, Matthew, Matthew 5, Matthew chapter 5. Now what, man, I took the mark of the beast, and people panic about that. So here's a very interesting passage. I'm not afraid to talk about doctrines where it may seem controversial. I don't worry about that. If it's found in the Word of God and it's Scripture, I actually get fascinated about that. If you came here and you watched us online, or you came to this church because you want the whole truth and nothing but the truth, not just skipping or overlooking certain doctrines because it might sound controversial, then this is the place for you, and I'm not going to put a filter. I'm just going to say it right here. So here's something that's very interesting about this passage about the mark of the beast. But first of all, go to Matthew 5. Matthew 5. What is the gospel that Jesus is preaching? Look at Matthew 4, 4, and then 5. Keep your hand there because we're going to look at 5 later. Chapter 4, verse 23. And Jesus, Jesus went, went, went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the what? Kingdom. Kingdom. Okay, so Jesus is preaching about the gospel of the kingdom here. Is it the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, or did it say gospel of the kingdom? Kingdom, all right? Kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. When the Jews heard Jesus talk about this kingdom, what did they think automatically? They thought it was an earthly kingdom that they were waiting for throughout the Old Testament because the Old Testament prophesied about a future time period where Israel will have their kingdom. Well, I have a question for you. This did not happen at the Old Testament, right? This did not happen at Old Testament. This did not happen at church age, right? Uh, this definitely doesn't happen at the tribulation. God's kingdom on the earth that the Jews look forward to. It's the only time period you can find is where? The millennium. Now, in order to... So, the millennium has the kingdom. In order to enter the kingdom, what do you got to do? Is it the church age? No, because the church age is before tribulation. Church age gets what? Raptured up to heaven. So this is not us Christians then. So what I'm going to say, mark it down, remember it, so that you don't do something crazy. This is Christians are already raptured. So this passage, the gospel of the kingdom, is not going to apply to us. Your gospel is not this. Your gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So then, look, if it's not for us, well, it's definitely not here then. Who's the only people that can go into the kingdom? Tribulation. Okay, if you're a person in the tribulation, then this is something you probably want to hear. Because keep your hand at Matthew 5 and 4 and go to Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Preacher, you're saying it's going to get interesting. Oh, tr you got to look at Scripture with Scripture now, and then it'll get very interesting. Watch this. That book is amazing. But first, let's go Scripture with Scripture so that we can see the doctrinal truth of God's Word later on. Look at Matthew chapter 25, and we will read verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon, notice, the throne of His glory. So God comes down out of heaven and sits on his throne of glory, where? On the earth. Because look at verse 32. And before him shall be gathered what? All nations around the world. So this is a throne, a kingdom on the earth. Where? Oh, this is it. So Jesus comes down and finds out which people are worthy to go into the kingdom, the earthly kingdom. You might say, why is that, Pastor? Oh, just keep reading. Just keep reading your Bible. Look at Matthew chapter 25, and we will read verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from where? From where? The foundation of the world. This is an earthly kingdom. So Jesus is judging these people, these nations, and finding out which people are worthy to enter the kingdom. So this passage I'm going to show you, this gospel of the kingdom here, in context, is going to refer to which people are worthy to enter the millennial kingdom. But it's interesting, when Jesus was preaching about the gospel of the kingdom, what did he say? Go to Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Well, your hand's at Matthew 4 too, right? Because I'm going to show you the context. Matthew 4. Verse 23, 
He's preaching the gospel of the kingdom, yes? This gospel of the kingdom, he begins at chapter 5, verse 1. Chapter 5, verse 1. He starts talking about the kingdom. All right? He's going to talk about the kingdom right here. You're going to notice that in Matthew chapter 5, and look what the Bible says at verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall what? Inherit the earth. All in context about the kingdom. The kingdom on the earth. But keep reading all the way down from Matthew chapter 5. So he talks occasionally right here, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven, on the earth, on the earth, on the earth, right? Because it's referring to God's earthly kingdom on the earth. Now, FYI, just in case some people got confused, if they're thinking kingdom of heaven, doesn't that talk about a kingdom in heaven? No, if you look, I'm not going to do it in this video. I showed you in other videos. If you look at another passage in Matthew, where John the Baptist was beheaded, Jesus referred the kingdom of heaven as an earthly kingdom where the violent uh, taken, the violent try to take it by force. So obviously there's no violence in heaven, that's on the earth. But that's, so the kingdom of heaven is definitely an earthly kingdom. But that's just FYI, in case some people didn't knew that. Okay, let's continue here. This kingdom on the earth, what did Jesus preach right here? Look at verse 29. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Strange. In these two verses, why is Jesus Christ, why are these people at the tribulation aware, should be aware of the gospel of the kingdom that in order to escape hell, in order not to be damned in hell, their whole body, they're what? They're supposed to have their right eye plucked out rather than their whole body sinning. They're supposed to have uh, their right hand cut off rather than their whole body sinning. You know why? Because Revelation 13, which is not a coincidence, you have the mark where? In your right hand or in your forehead. So the thing is this, is that if you have 666 on your right hand, you're going to hell, man. You're damned for eternity. So you don't want that in your system, especially when God judges you, when he comes down and judges you. So what do you do with the right hand? That verse said right hand, coincidentally, in Matthew 5.30. Revelation 30 coincidentally said right hand. Coincidentally, Matthew 25, Jesus said those on his right hand come inherit the kingdom, prepared from the foundation of the world. Because this thing will damn you to hell. So instead of your whole body going to hell, it is better that this is cut off. And then what? You got the mark on the forehead, so that thing goes so deep that you're going to have to pluck out your right eye and then cut it all off. And that's why in the tribulation, how do you die in the tribulation? By martyrdom. Because if you have this mark on your forehead, you're damned. It's better to lose this. And it's better to lose this than thy whole body being cast into hell. Fascinating. But here's another thing. Oh, we're not done yet, folks. We're not done yet. That Bible's amazing. Here's another thing right here. Go to Zechariah 11. The mark of who? The beast. The beast is invincible. Well, there is something that can kill the beast. And what killed the beast? Look at Zechariah chapter 11. And that Bible, it just... It, fascinates you on every word on what it says. Zechariah chapter 11. Look what the Bible says about the Antichrist. Verse 17, Woe to the idle shepherd. That's the Antichrist. That leaveth the flock. That's the Antichrist. The sword, so this talks about the Antichrist getting assassinated in the middle of the tribulation. But he resurrects again and starts the mark of the beast. Why? He dies how? The sword shall be upon his what? arm and upon his what? Right eye. His arm shall be what? Clean, dried up. And his right eye shall be what? Uh, oh, wow. What kills the beast? Well, what killed the beast is that his right eye got injured and then one of his hands, one of his arm got injured. That killed the beast. The beast resurrects and is angry and he wants you in return to put that mark in your right hand and right here above your eyes. Woo! Woo! 
chew on that meat for a while, folks. That's amazing right there. So that's why it's called the mark of the beast. But what killed the beast is to, have the, is to injure it right there. And so to kill that mark of the beast, you injure that right there. And that's why so many people took Matthew 5 literally and applied it in the wrong age. And you got a stupid church father named Origen who took that literally. And he believed that the, the hand should be cut off, the right eye should be plucked off, and you got to mutilate your body, then your whole body going into hell. That's not for you. That's for people in the tribulation because why? They're going to be doomed to burn in hell for all eternity unless they kill that particular mark. Now, with our heads blown up, let's all close with a word of prayer and go home.